So the Sony a7C, a camera that should have been released along with the Sony a7 III in 2018 that would have sold pretty well if you ask me, for people just looking for video. However, it's 2020 and it's been released, so I've made a list of all the things that suck about it so you're not confused and even spending an extra minute thinking about whether you should buy this camera over the a7 III. Let's get started. So the a7C, a squandered opportunity if you ask me, it could have been so much more, it could have been a bestseller with just a few things. They came close, but it's just not enough. But let's go over some of the things that, in my opinion, completely missed the mark and are really disappointing. One, let's give credit where it's due. It's a fantastic size and pretty much the most compact, smallest full frame camera that you can buy. However, ergonomically, it looks like it's even less impressive than the a6600, making it a little bit weird when it comes to vlogging and handling because, well, it's supposed to be a vlogging and YouTuber camera, but it's not very good when it comes to ergonomics. So it's good because it's small, but its grip and its overall design, I don't like it. A single card slot definitely rules this camera out for any professional work and nobody in their right mind's gonna actually put this thing into the field where it really matters. So that's another downside, I guess, to cut costs. And yeah, another deal breaker for me. We finally have the fully articulating screen we should have had from the very beginning, but it's the same screen and EVF from the a7 III. The same subpar EVF and LCD screen from 2018. I don't know what their thought process is behind this. Obviously we're far, far ahead in technology where it really wouldn't have been much to double or even triple that amount, but they've gone with what they already, I guess, no people have settled for. And uh, it's not okay, not, not on board with this. One thing that does look a little bit decent is the weather sealing. I wasn't sure about this, how they were gonna manage, but those ports actually look pretty decent. There's no weird flippy floppy things like the a7 III, so they do get a little bit of credit in that regard. Along with great features is the Z-Type battery, which again, if you ask me, should be standard in every camera moving forward. A fantastic reason to buy Sony and probably one of the main factors for me getting into it in the first place. Speaking of the body, another crappy thing is that there's no custom buttons or joystick. So it's kind of like the A6600 or A6000 series where it's just a little bit more difficult to navigate, a little bit more time and just on the fly, it's just a little bit, kind of annoying. So that's a little bit disappointing and I understand they had to fit a full frame camera in a mirrorless body, but that's definitely something that could have been added. Okay, so let's get to what matters. And it's 4K 30. That's a huge opportunity lost. It could have been 460 and been just an awesome selling camera. It's also 8-bit. So we're basically getting the exact same camera capabilities as the a7 III. And well, it's nothing special. They have done a great job at removing the 30 minute time limit, but really, I think that's expected these days. It's the same old sensor and the same sensor in the a7 III, which is a good sensor, we like to see a little bit more out of. So they have tweaked the algorithms a bit. It looks like we're getting about a third of a stop better dynamic range, as well as noise performance. So that's okay, I guess. But it's a vlogging camera and designed for YouTubers. So we're gonna be out moving around a lot. So obviously they brought a lot of the technology from the a7S III into this beautiful camera like the IBIS, right? No, they didn't. They didn't even improve the IBIS. In fact, they reworked the entire IBIS and from what I see, it's actually worse than the a7 III. So there's no electronic image stabilization added. It's basically just the same mediocre IBIS that we get in the a7 III. Unimpressive. It does have some of the autofocus capabilities of the a7S III, real-time tracking, eye autofocus in video, but it does have some of the same bugs like face detect when you're monitoring your 4K footage in 30p. It's just really annoying stuff like that that just makes this just an epic fail if you ask me. Sure, it has slightly better skin tone than it's been tweaked here or there. It's a two year newer camera. This camera belongs in 2018 and it's kind of a disappointment for me. There are a few cool features, but overall I think they've missed the mark huge on this one. And I really like to give them the benefit of the doubt, but let's talk about the price. 
So of course this is a lesser camera than the a7 III. And I guess it really depends if you ask a photographer or a filmmaker. But the a7 III is a hybrid camera. This is not, this is tailored for video with things taken out for the most part. So having said that, what does this thing cost? The a7 III nowadays you can pick up for 1800 bucks when it's usually on sale, which is quite often. And the a7C comes in at 1800 bucks. So basically you can get an a7 III in a smaller body with a flip screen for the same price. So I don't know about you, but I'm taking the a7 III. So obviously this is a bit of a shock to me and a lot of people. These are just my overall beginning thoughts and I'm sure there's gonna be some upgrades in software to be had, but I don't know, I'm really not thrilled about this. I think they had a big opportunity that was just clearly missed. But I wanna hear your thoughts, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this camera. And if you want an opportunity to win a lens that I'm giving away, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, join the community, and like always, make mistakes, be yourself, and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.